If you create automations for your clients or for your own business, or you're just about to understand or try to figure out how automations work and how you can implement them into your business or your AI automation agency, you definitely have to understand what a request is. In today's video, I would like to give you a basic understanding of what a request is, in my opinion, specifically optimized for AI automation agencies, so that you don't need to understand the whole basics of what an actual request from a technological standpoint is. So everything you learned today is what an exactly HTTP request is, how it works within the web space, how you can use it for your own workflow automations. And you will also get a better understanding of what happens behind the scenes so you can implement it for your own workflows and it makes it tons easier to debug your very own workflows in case something goes wrong. If you stay until the end of the video, you will also get a bonus that is available on our hub.indigraticus.com resource hub completely for free. So you can simply sign up, link is in the description and there's nothing charged whatsoever. Everything I'm going to teach you today is literally from my past seven, eight years of experience inside of the automation industry. Everything of how I understand the things and I'll try to give them to you as plain and simple as possible. So I, I will not use many kind of complex terms that you first need to research to get a better understanding. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. And even though it might still be in some parts a bit more complex, just for the technical nature it is, you can always drop me a comment down below in the comments wherever you see this specific video. All right, I prepared an amazing presentation, so let's just jump right over. To get started, I would like to give you a basic example of what an actual request is from like a human kind of perspective. So let's assume we are going to a restaurant or I'm going to a restaurant and I would like to ask the waiter what's the dish of the day or like the special they have today. I'm just gonna ask the waiter and he gives me an answer and says something like, yeah, today it is the, the pumpkin soup or the blue lobster. And what happened in that case basically is that he literally just gave me an answer based on a request that I initiated. So I got the information back that I wanted and the whole process has been done. So this is from a very human standpoint, but we are talking about the technological standpoint or what happens within your automations and to make it very simple we are talking about everything that happens technological in the sense of robots even though it might just be some code snippets it might just be a, a server that answers or some other kind of tools or frameworks you use but for simplicity reasons we call everything robots to go into the next steps this is a very key information which i like which i wanted to share before jumping into the next slide we are going to see what an actual http request is which is the request in the sense of i am the the person who makes the request but instead of asking a waiter i am going to ask a robot so Instead of waiting for the waiter to get an answer, I'm going to wait for the robot to give me a specific answer for a specific task. Obviously, ro robots need to be programmed, so they need to have a specific context, which is where you need to structure things, etc. And to give you a very basic example without you actually needing to understand how exactly it works, we created an endpoint on our resource hub. So if you log in there, you will definitely, you can simply just drop in this URL into your browser and you will see an answer. And what that basically means is the URL you see on the screen right here is literally a request URL. So you, you put it in your browser, you press enter, and the moment you press enter, you're basically requesting as a user from our server some information. And what you will get back is something that looks like this, which just looks like curly brackets, some, some uh, double quotes and specific information. But this is literally the format that mostly all the robots read in the in the web space or for your workflow automations or with anything that happens between requests uh, in a very basic sense but it gives you an understanding to see what happens behind the scenes so robots basically don't do anything else than just calling a specific url like the one you see here waiting for an answer and taking the answer and doing something specific based on that that's literally the whole concept so if we are seeing this from an automation perspective there is still one issue us we don't want to have us within an automation because why building an automation in the first place if we are involved, right? So we're going to take this one step further, which brings us to automated HTTP requests, in which case we are replacing ourselves with another robot. So we basically let a robot talk with another robot. And this is where the magic lays because we can just rem remove all of the human interference and automate things from one point to another using only technology, which is what automation does and which is in my opinion, the most amazing thing ever. And to give you a basic example, I mentioned here three, three little um, events that are usually used to, to trigger those kind of requests. One of them is an order is created. So let's say you have an online shop, right? Your online shop is runs on code. And whenever a new order comes in, some code runs in the backend that saves it in some database or wherever. And you can kind of inject specific logic into that code 
that says, okay, now when you order fired, I want to send this information to a different URL so that this specific robot understands it and can do something else with it. And that would be, for example, interesting if you want to create a newsletter sign up to a different service like MailChimp or Campaign Monitor or Active Campaign. So you can use a URL that they provide to send data to whenever an order is created. And that, hap that can be done with mostly anything that you can imagine that happens within the technology that you actually use on your server or your automation or wherever. And this is the main thing I would like you to understand that you completely replace yourself and you literally let robots talk with robots. And this is, I think, the most basic thing and probably the best thing you can understand to, to get an understanding of, of how those requests work. So you basically let the robot make the request, wait for some answer, and this request is used by the robot again to do something else. And to get actually a feeling, or I'm actually talking so much about what a request is, but you don't even know how a request exactly looks like. You saw that it's a URL. Okay, but what exactly does that mean? Like what happens behind the scenes if I call that URL? It is an actual pretty complex process, but I tried to break it down to things that I realized over the past seven years are the most common ones, which mostly happen in any kind of scenario you do within your automations or your workflows. So let's jump right over. This slide literally explains everything. I suggest you make a screenshot. You will also find that within our resource hub because it's for, for me, I would say like literally the most boiled down but most efficient version for you to understand what the request is. All right, let's dive into it. The first thing is obviously the URL or it's also called an endpoint. It is basically a specific URL with a slug behind the domain that is meant to have a specific purpose. So let's say we have a, a domain.com slash endpoint and we want to, I don't know, have it to, to get a menu. It would probably be something like slash API slash menu slash v1 slash English or whatever menu you would like to fetch. But in this case, I kept it simple, it's domain.com slash endpoint. And this specific endpoint can have different properties. And those properties actually have nothing specifically to do with the request itself. So if we are going back to the example of me and the waiter, it is actually not me asking the question to the waiter and then getting the response. It's actually what happens before that. It's me making the decision what exactly I would like to ask. And it's me making the decision what, what exactly I would like to, uh, or, or how long I would like to wait for that specific waiter to answer me. So you can, for example, say that, okay, I'll ask the waiter that I would like to know the menu of the day, or I'd like to ask the menu about the, the languages in which the menu is available or the specific special of the day. All of that is decided before, and that is usually done within code. So all of these things, they are basically part of the request, but they are done within the code before the actual request happens. And here are two of the main things that I think are super, super important, which is the request method, which is basically the specific type you would like to, to, to ask the user. So if I would use a, a get request method, it would be something like I'm asking the waiter for the special of the day because I want to get some specific information from him. If I use a, a post request or a put request, it basically means that I'm asking him to do a specific task or to save information in a technical sense. That could be something like, please order a still water, use it room temperature and bring two glasses, something like that. The delete request, obviously, you would say to the waiter something like, okay, okay, just one glass, please. So cancel the last thing, blah, 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 whatever. And the timeout is, you can be interpreted as something like how long you want to wait for an answer. So you ask the waiter, what's the special of the day or does that have some kind of allergies inside of the food? He doesn't know he needs to ask someone else. He doesn't come back for five minutes. You say, oh, whatever, I just order something else. So you kind of scrap the request and you start something else again. So this is kind of like a timeout that you can set to wait for a specific answer. And then you have other things like the SSL verification, blocking, if you actually need an answer in the first place. Like when you make a post request, for example, you say, okay, I just want a water. I don't care if he brings it, great. If he doesn't bring it, whatever, I don't care. And that is everything that happens before the actual request. So coming to the request itself, we can there, there are three main points I would like to cover, which I see in most of those requests, which is first query parameters, which is basically additional information or additional context or specific details that you can send along within the URL that are usually not sensitive or if they are sensitive, they should never be shared. And as you can see here in the presentation, you basically can see it as the, as the URL endpoint slash endpoint. And then it's followed by a question mark, which basically interprets to the server or whoever the robot is that tries to understand it that we are defining some parameters. And here you can see it is first name with an equal sign in between and then the actual value separated by an and sign, then the last name with an equal sign and more. So it basically just contains my first name and it contains the last name. And that is literally it. If you see it with a lot of other tools out there, especially when you when you talk to other APIs or so-called APIs, you will see that they also send API keys often within the URL, which is probably a very insecure way to do things, but they still happen. But that is a topic that I will cover at a later point, which comes to 
actual quality of APIs that are out there because it's a pretty big mess. Anyways, the other two points I'd like to cover in the sense of making them understandable based on a package. Let's say I am making a post request, so I'm not specifically requiring an answer in that case, but I would just like to send a package to you. So I would basically just put the package together. I put a label on top. I write something on it, where it goes to, where it can be returned, etc., and send it out to you. And if we are seeing that from the sense of a header, it's basically the specifications, what to do in case, or where, where the package has to go, if it has to be delivered and where it can be returned, for example. It's, it's kind of like specifying specific things that a receiver can interpret or the, the whoever manages that specific request can interpret to do some things. As you can see in the description, I added things like cookies, so you can send cookies along within the headers, authentication to make things more secure, and something called the content type, which is I think one of the most important of all of those values, which is usually what you've seen in the second slide, this specific, it's called JSON format, so this specific string. This is usually something that you define within the header, so you say things like, okay, I'm going to send you a content type called JSON, this is the way you have to, how you have to interpret it, and the specific robot then is able to understand the information you send along. And that information that we are just talking about, the so-called JSON, is what comes into the last part, which is the body or the so-called payload. This is what is inside of the package, what contains all of the information you would like the receiver to have, to use, to store, to do whatever you like with it. And this always comes in a specific structured data format, which can be most commonly JSON, which can be XML, which can be even a, a query string within the body. So you can wrap anything in there, even text, so whatever you would like, you can send along within the body, but you always need to give it some context so you your, your receiver can understand it. And uh, this is literally the, the whole bundle of the request. So you have on the one hand, the endpoint URL, which is where you send the stuff to, which is like the receiver, the robot that receives the things. You make definitions before, so the so-called properties, which you use to, to specify things, how long you want to wait for an answer, want an answer in the first place, or if you require it, and what kind of method you want to do, uh, and what you want to send it to. And then as well, the headers, and the payload for, actual, for actually delivering the content and the specifications of the receiver to understand how he should interpret that specific data. And that is the whole bundle of a specific request. Now to put the final word on that and give you actually a proper understanding of how that looks within code or how it can be interpreted within code, I just created a very simple example that you can see here, which uses the command line tool curl, which can be also used in PHP and other libraries or languages have their own tools. And I'm just gonna go with you over that specific prompt, so, or this specific comment. So we have definitely the definition of curl, which makes a post request. So in that case, we want to send information somewhere. We are using the content type application slash JSON to make sure that the receiver understands it will be a JSON format. And then as you can see here, we're sending a string using the username and the email of a specific user and we are sending it to this specific endpoint, which would be bad, I just realized, because it just uses HTTP instead of HTTPS, so you always want to have a secure connection, but that's a different problem. And based on what I see here, I already have an understanding of what actually what this specific request actually does, and in that case, it basically means you probably want to update or create a specific user on this example endpoint. Because you send a post request, so you want to do an action you send the username along, you send an email along, and you probably want to create the user. Like, obviously that's a, a guess. It can also be, for example, to request the password reset, depending on the endpoint, etc. But this way you get a basic understanding of what happens within the specific request. Now at the end, to give you the bonus I talked about earlier, I have prepared on our resource hub a complete list of getting a better understanding what JSON actually is. I will definitely cover that in a later video as well, to give you an understanding, an in-depth understanding of how JSON works, what it is, how it should be used, how it should be interpreted, how it can be manipulated, etc. But for now, to give you a better understanding in all the tools I'm using on a, on a very regular base to deal with JSON, I created a list within our hub and under hub.integraticus.com. So it's free, just create your account, link is in the description, sign up and try it out for yourself. And I decided to share that before I actually make the video about JSON so that you can actually put in the effort, get an understanding of what it is. So you can already make up your own mind, see some patterns, try to figure it out, which just boosts your productivity for actually understanding what a JSON is for my next video much better. And that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that video. I know it was a lot of information and I tried to break it down as simple as I could. So if something was unclear, I'm of course always happy to help you all. So just drop me a comment down below and otherwise I'm very happy to welcome you to the next video. 
Take care.